Good evening. Evening, good evening, good evening, governor. <laughs> good evening, governor. <laughs> Anytime I hear somebody say good evening, it's so proper. Good evening. I was just saying that earlier, and I don't know what it, I don't want to say nothing else. Everything else don't sound I, good. I am a good evening person. I will Morning. send somebody. I'm good for a good <laughs> evening. Per our last casually, casually, casually. That's just. I'm texting good evening. Did you watch good that? Evening. Right? Like I'm that's Cause somebody the other day said good night to me and I'm like, you can't say that at the beginning, of yeah, course. No. Listen, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a salutations type of bitch. I speak proper. right. I will well, speak with, proper. Ain't that what all that other stuff means? Come on I said now. Like salutations. <laughs> Shit. But um welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the platform. Mm-hmm. Um a bitch. Got a Spelman degree, so she thinks she can have a podcast now. Right, right. <laughs> and she could have had one all along, but now's the time, if ever. I could have. You know what? You are not the first person to say that to me. You are not the first person to be like, bitch, you should have been podcasting. I don't know where you've been at. And I'm like, you know, I wasn't moved. I wasn't moved. And right. Then, then, okay. I, then, I, then I was moved. You know what it was? I, I have been listening to so many podcasts. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a fact. And I think when you're somebody who's listening to a lot of podcasts, it's just like, of course, you have to start a podcast of your own at some point. You right. have to. You have to. At some point, you realize it's time for me to start a podcast. So welcome to the While We Wait podcast, a podcast about abstinence and celibacy. And who are you, Miss Miss, Miss Beautiful Loveliest? Joy <laughs> Joyessa, introduce yourself. I love that. I'm Joy. Um, wow, I'm not gonna in- in- introduce myself because I never know. Come on, like, what's like the You know how to what the context yourself. is, but it's so because I don't even identify. Hi, I'm Joy. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm Hello, hello. <laughs> My most aggressive here. emotion is excited, happy. Hello. See? Um. <laughs> Yeah, no, just like the, like, I mean, like, you know, your name, age, well, no, let me stop, ASL, no, right. you know, people want to know your name, your age, uh, right, so, I'm Joy, so gender identity, 22 like years old, 22 years old, I love the idea of telling people my pronouns, but I also love the idea of letting other people say what they want, and I still know who I am, so call me whatever, um, hey, we love that progressive thought, I, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you so I'm I'm I am part of the Goofy clan. I am a part of a Goofy group of folks. You are. Um, we are. And I mean, yeah, but I say put the we. But yeah, that's we. it. That's me. I'm an educator. I teach from three to eighty three. Oh yeah, and- Joy be teaching the kids, y'all. She's the children <laughs> of the UJ. She's educating them. Right. She's educating. Don't say that song makes me go. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so specifically, I uh, have a, a philosophy, a company, a purpose okay. that is called Build One, Build Some, Build All. And it really is just focusing on building stronger networks with yourself, with those closest to you and those um, that we would consider global, but not necessarily on a world scale, but mm. mostly like the people that we just don't know, you know? Oh, so that again, what, what's, what's your philosophy? Build One, Build Some build all okay i just want people to hear it one more time you know repetition Absolutely. helps them remember ah, what talking about. Ah, ah so yes educator um but i understand that educate just means to pull out and to mold yep so at the end of the day i can educate myself you can educate me we can do it to each other we can we can really get good good times in this life if we see things as a little wider so here we are you know some people just have the spirit of an educator within them and joy is somebody that since the moment i met her has just had the spirit of an educator and i don't mean like a teacher i mean an educator she just educates the people around her she's not trying to make you change your mind or even your whole philosophy of way of thinking she's just gonna let you know that what you said is connected to these thoughts and ideologies and you should think about that and that's it and that's it and you think about it and then you think about it and i didn't tell you to yep yep you think about it and you go you know what i have i have been educated today and that's all that's 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 really it so i'm very thankful 
that in this universe, on this realm and plane during this existence, that uh, joy exists. I really am. Wow. Yeah, no, I'm serious. I really am. I really, really am. So um, this podcast is about abstinence and celibacy. And I know that everybody has their own understanding of what celibacy means, what abstinence means, what abstinence? No, what abstinence means. Thank you. Uh-huh. Yeah, but you had it. You had I it had it, though. I was going to keep going. I was gonna and keep if going. you think about it, abstinence with the word in with. What, right? I mean, it, it would have worked. Exactly. I could have made. I could have kept going, but I said I want people to know that I know how to speak. Um... <laughs> Yeah. So what is your what's your understanding of celibacy and abstinence? Um, because they don't mean the same thing. And I'm always interested in hearing people's thoughts on the two and how that they've come to understand what they mean um, personally and socially. All right. So without looking anything up, the first thing that comes to mind yep. with abstinence is when you think of like somebody with one of those purity rings mm, that like Jonas, Jonas Brothers, Brothers yeah. right, I was right. there with you I went, I went right behind you man. <laughs> so when I I'm think here. of Nick Jonas I'm like right abstinence yeah. has done it before yeah. and isn't gonna do it until they're married or in a, in a mm. certain kind of commitment mm. right yeah. okay All right. then celibacy is when you start it but you pause oh. intentionally um, so yeah that's what I think okay I love that I love that well, we can go straight into the definitions because I like to hear people's uh, response and reactions to when they hear the definition of each word. People are always like, that is not what I was thinking. And I'm like, yeah, you know, words are crazy. You know, they're interesting. <laughs> we we make words mean something entirely different and we just don't That's care to reference what it means. So <laughs> uh, celibacy is just your straight one-liner, true definition, essence of the word celibacy is the state of abstaining from marriage and sexual relations. Abstinence is the practice of abstaining from something. The practice of not doing or having right, something just generally. that is wanted or enjoyable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Think right. I do understand that. Yeah, the thing about celibacy is people um, people always think um, it's a start and stop thing. But people usually um, take vows of celibacy when they are in a state of still not having had sex. Um, celibacy Understood. usually happens. You, you take that vow and you just never do. Um, but abstinence would be the better one for, for the definition you were providing of you started and then you, you hit a pause and you may reason again. Okay. Um, because abstinence just means you're you're not doing something that you want or enjoy to do, which means you could be abstaining from alcohol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you could be abstaining right. from drugs. You it's could, about desire and right. you could be you, Hey, you could be abstaining from steak, right? That's how abstaining works. Whereas you can't be celibate from steak, whatever. Um, but I always personally align with celibacy more because it, it's speaking directly to making that intentional choice to abstain from sex um, and marriage. I like that it puts an emphasis on when you're in that state of being, you're going to do that by yourself. Because um, there's a hyper awareness that comes with being abstinent or practicing celibacy that I think that you sort of need to master by yourself. You know, mm. before you uh, bring somebody into it, right? So I like that. It, I like that it focuses on that there. So what do you think? Uh, really, what you said, I was just listening because I never heard it. I mean, I I could have made those connections, but I hadn't heard them like said before. What's the word? Like yeah. said, in, like play side by side like that. You know, like juxtaposed or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because in real life, like the way we kind of like you said make words mean things just because the connotation is carried rather than denotation like mm-hmm. bro i knew that abstaining was like pausing but i didn't think about it like that either yeah and so in real life i do like the way that like you pointed out the specifics of celibacy mm-hmm. instead of just calling them both the same thing yeah people use them interchangeably a lot not realizing that Maybe not to say one is more serious than the other, but I think when people are uh, taking a vow of celibacy, 
Gotta love, you gotta love being in the city because right. When it's not a podcast enough. unless you hear the police. Not a podcast. Anyway. I love it. Right. Um, but so. not a podcast. Mm-hmm. Not a podcast. <laughs> right. And so now it is a podcast. Yeah. Wonderful. Made it. Uh, celibacy like- though is you know when someone says they've taken a vow of celibacy, they've entered a state of celibacy. It's it's. I just feel like it's like one little notch above deep. <laughs> you know, like. You don't have to say it's that deep, but like it is though. It is because it's kind of serious. Um, It's kind of a a serious decision to make. And so being on this journey for two years, going into my third year on my 24th birthday, I really, you know, I started the podcast because I just got really introspective and reflective. (laughs) And I was like, "Mm, I want to really, I want to put this energy somewhere. (laughs) Like I don't, like I do not want this to be a um, bottled up, wholly internalized experience i think some of it should be external i think i should be experiencing this transformation um outwardly as well which means i have to talk (laughs) like something must be produced out of me from this time i must have improved over some i think it's so funny how you say that and like what i'm realizing a lot of nowadays um being celibate like I realized a lot of things as like a youngin about release, right? Mm. Like just how you use things for release. You use people, you use substances, you use yeah. experience to release, right? And then when I paused on the sex and I was like, okay, I'm not going to use that to release because when you release, you also intake, right? Like you receive. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, how else can I release and receive? And so mm-hmm. you just you really, right now you described that because like yeah. the different types of hobbies I fill my time with, like, and yeah, things that I was already doing, right, <laughs> right? Things that I was already doing, but I do them in a more like, be, it's, it's, the word could be formal, but it's also ritualistic. Like the way I would yes. have sex. Every, I like Right. That. The way I would have sex every, every weekend it's because I knew that was my off time and that was when I was, you know, mm-hmm. and I would go over somebody's house. Now I'm like, okay, we doing hobbies, bro. We doing other hobbies. hobbies. We're built. I mean, people, people started whole whole companies. We're building hobbies. <laughs> We're doing things with with our time that is not. All right. Um, uh, we're doing something with our time that is not for not. Honestly, just just speaking that for not. Uh, hey, sometimes I want to I want to hop in my Shakespeare bag. Um, we're just doing Thank things you. that are you Thank know you. that are not for not. Like it's like. Yeah, like you said, you'd be going over to somebody's house. What y'all doing? What are you doing over here? I, you know, I feel like you get to a point where you're just like, what am I doing over here? Like, what and what's you- wild is actually... <sighs> <sighs> yeah. Sorry, I had to blow some eyelashes, make some wishes. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what's wild is like, okay, so as a former and current sex worker, but... And when I say former, I mean like I paused and I switched up the yeah. the role I gave myself. Um, like the sex work I would do, be it like having intercourse with somebody mm. or just build a relationship that might include intercourse or, um, you know, like posing mm. in a way where mm. they could like kind of beat their meat to me or whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. That has turned into more like... Stuff that I can look at for myself when I masturbate. You know, it's real weird mm-hmm. to make a video for someone and it's still doing the same. It's not doing the same thing, but it's doing on the same type of right. with the same type of clients. And it's just like, oh, but now this is a little more beneficial for me when before mm-hmm. it was like, it's beneficial in the moment, but like to carry people's energy, even if I wasn't trying to, mm-hmm. or to have to be in somebody's space in such a vulnerable place where it wasn't like they were necessarily holding me and uh holding me like tenderly or whatever even mm-hmm. if they were doing their best mm-hmm. now it's like i have a different standard for how i move about all that and it's cool it makes me happier which is my goal yeah the happiness how long so how long have you been on 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 your journey as they say on my big c's <laughs> dog um um since august no yeah. since september 14th Okay. I remember the day. All right, couple. All right, let me. Hey, you started. It's and I'm telling you, it's long for somebody who's not. No, into- listen. I'm coming up on. I'm telling you, coming up on three years. I'm kind of like, how you been doing this? Like, how you been? <laughs> how you really been? Like, no, nah, I'm good. And it's and like just like that. No, no. I'm good. <laughs> 
Right. I was saying another thing for me, it's not really about my timing at all. Like, or it's not about the time. It's about the timing. Mm. Like for me, I'm not having no like, this is my goal. This is how long. Unless I get word from my ancestors or whatever. Like, yeah. God, I'm not really focusing on the time. The other day I got worried about 25 days for something. Um, a different situation, mm-hmm. but related. So it's like, if I'm not getting like word, I'm not going to force myself to do nothing. But this flow right now that's working for me. Yeah, where I decide doing. completely yeah. based on what I'm like, what my goals are outside of this all, it's busting. Like mm. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm not even looking at the clock. You know, like it'll just, so, it just so happens that like, oh, oh, hey, oh, four months later, hello, love that. <laughs> That's a whole quarter. That is a fiscal quarter. You yeah. Know? Wait, no, it's not. That's a fiscal <laughs> tree. Tri- yeah. Triad trio trigit <laughs> trimester. Ooh, yeah. Oh, words. <laughs> <laughs> No, but that's, um, I think, you know, I feel like that's one of the beauties and the blessings and the lessons that comes from starting this journey is you have your, you have to slow down. You have to slow down. I think when you stop, you realize you were going a little too fast. And it's like, I'm not calling nobody fast. I'm just saying. That was a word though. No, that was the word. But you know what? Say that again. Say that again. Say that again. Like you just be moving too fast. And I think you just realize when you stop. When you stop, when you're like, I'm I'm going to enter into a state of celebration. Like, I'm going to stop. Like, I'm making the conscious decision. Like, yes, I may come across somebody that I am attracted to. I'm not having sex with them. Like, I'm literally, I'm not doing that right now in this season. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm not doing that. And it forces you to slow down because you realize the speed at which you were trying to have certain experiences, it was a little too fast. Mm-hmm. It was a little too fast. I thought it was a little too fast. You know, it was, just, it was just a little too fast. And so it kind of knocks you. Like, I feel like what you have also described is you are very much in alignment right now. You know it. Mm-hmm. You know, you just know, like, right now, you know, you're not worried about if it happens today, tomorrow, or next week, because you know it's going to happen. And you know that the mm-hmm. steps that need to be taken to get there are being taken. You're taking them every day. And you're following. Like you said, ritual, instruction, instruction. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. you also kind of like- surrender and submit yourself onto something um, greater within you. It's self-discipline. It's self-mastery. That's, that's what... Discipline. That's, yeah. That's what celibacy uh, is to me. It's self-discipline. Other side of discipline. Right. No, no. Other side of discipline is what I was looking for. I touched it. I've seen that recently, too. Oh, I was okay. like, what? You better motherfucking speak. See? Oh, you always affirm sometimes before you even deliver the message. Just just to remind you, the message is always inside of you. Because, um... Mm, I love it. Thank you, Disney. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little writer. I was an English major. No. <laughs> but it's, um... I think it's an experience that when you decide you want to have it and you start taking it, um, you just start to see immediate fortune benefit in your life very quickly. Very quickly. I- while you were describing the moving too fast, when you pause, you see that you were moving. As a dancer, like, or you see how fast you're moving. As a dancer, I think about, like, when you're on a team dance or when you're dancing with music. And, yeah, you got the beat, you got the rhythm, but there's a part where it's, like, so, it's a little it's a little complex. Right. So the timing got to be on point. And when mm-hmm. you stop to watch somebody else do it or stop to see what's what, it's like, oh, okay. And then you literally, yeah. it's not like. Forcing, you're forcing yourself to unlearn something that was not quite right in the first place. You know that mm-hmm. wasn't in the first place, and so now it's like the force is less. Like it's it might be annoying, but it's it's pleasing to force yeah. yourself to in a way where it's like the whole team being like synchronous, yeah. and I think that's that's um, how I feel for <laughs> having having your life feel synchronized is a really wonderful thing, but. To achieve that takes work. Of course. Of course. To achieve that takes work. And I guess, yeah, I guess, folks, you can quote me on Maybe don't quote me on it, but <laughs> but maybe you do. Um, I, I, I feel that some of the work needed to take the steps to get there or one step is, I think, yeah, yeah, entering into this state of being just for a little bit. Nobody said it has to be for 10 years. In your season, right. it might be three months, and someone else's season, it might be two years, and someone else's season, it might be five. But the point is, I, nobody said forever. We just said, you need to really have a season where you are wholly dedicated to yourself. Stillness, honestly. Like, it's the stillness yep. for me. Slow down. Uh, just slow, just slow yeah. down. <laughs> 
in a world that tells us we got to, got to, got to all the time, it's mm-hmm. powerful to be able to. Mm, I don't have to do anything, buddy. I don't have to. I think that's why people even rush into the relationship and all this stuff and the situationship. You feel super rushed to achieve this, like, goal with a stranger, if we're being honest. That's how I feel. Because aren't we all just strangers to each other until we get to know each other? So it's like you're rushing to have this reality. Even then, even then we're still going to be strangers at the end of the day. Oh, like, of course. Because you had your 25, 27, 30, whatever the difference is, you know, of life before me. <laughs> so I don't know that person. I don't know that man. <laughs> Sorry to that man. I don't know him. But you do, and he's always with you. So it's like, yeah. So, But yeah, same way like you don't know that woman before I met you. Like... We are all our own people, but um, I think that's why it's important to take a period of time, a season of time where you really get to know yourself. You know, so we, so so you can know if you're being triggered or gaslit. So you can know you, what's happening. <laughs> you got to know you over and over. I'm not the same motherfucker from 2013. Okay. But in person from 2000, you know, it wasn't, it was never, it was never like that. Mm. <laughs> But it's like that for people, though. Some people are really like that, though. That is that they they stay in the, in a comfortable space, but it's not really comfortable. After being in it for X time, you know you want to move forward, but you are choosing to be um, stuck. And I mean, it's like with the growth too. Like if you know that as a fruit, as a plant, as a seed, you're gonna grow into different like, like cycles, mm-hmm. but you refuse to see that. Yes, I got seeds, but I'm no longer only a seed. Like, I'm a whole fruit with seeds on the inside. You right. know, like, maybe for me to, to, to see something a little different. Right. And so I think whether or not people are choosing that, mm-hmm. it's more like, but when you, when you, it's okay to choose what you know, but when yeah. you choose no new things, because you just, cho- like, you choose to be willfully ignorant. And like, when I say ignorant, just choose not to want to know anything else. Yeah, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. now. Now you playing yourself only because you said this won't work for you. You never tried it. You I made up a song. <laughs> this is the song. There's no such thing as failing when the goal is to try. Hey. Because you could, you could dead try and get like, you can try today, tomorrow. Well, Just make day. Sure. Oh, you can try, bro. You can try. Try it. Tank, you know? Try. I think people, um, People don't want to really have to foster these really um, these really open relationships, these really open dynamics. Like, just just try to get to know yourself, and also really try to get to know another person. For sure, which is complicated, especially when you don't have the how mm. or you don't have that you're enough. Like. And it's not that anybody else has to give you that validation, but when you truly need some guidance and yeah. nobody's there to do that, it could be much easier to go with the flow that you already know, you know? Well, isn't that why everybody tweets? Kind of, I feel like there's been this one tweet going around, like, that's kind of about relationships. And it could be applied romantically or just like, um, what is it, platonically or whatever. But they're like, you know, people are not mind readers. And so everyone, everyone gets frustrated in relationship or everyone... You know, people start journeys, even like this, absence of celibacy and leave things so quick because we all expect that everyone's going to experience gro- growth at the same time. And that's just not true, <laughs> you know, and that's just not true. And so, yeah, you might be entering a certain season and people might be around you in your life who aren't in that season yet. And maybe they'll never be in that season or maybe they'll be in that season five years from now, whatever. But it's like at the end of the day, um, it's still a vow and a decision and a choice you made for yourself. So you're going to stick to it. You know, right. like, you still going to do what you have to do for... I'm doing for this you. for me. Yeah. Shit. No, okay. I mean... um, You know, you think about dating, like... That's what, that's that's how... It, for me, that's how it feels to date while in a state of celibacy. And being in a space now where, yeah, I'm com- I'm comfortably saying I'm, wa- I'm waiting until marriage. um, And knowing that... <laughs> that's going to make dating a little different for me <laughs> because that is not what is expected. Right. But I have to still hold true and fast to what I am doing for myself to which is benefiting me. Right. Regardless of what's around me. Like how, how do you, are you dating? How are you not? Can I ask that? Yeah, I can ask that. How are you, are you dating? How are you navigating? Um, I'm excited about this whole quarantine shit because, uh, 
it's been a good time like talking to people and getting to know them and mm-hmm. having like our personal intimate moments even with new people for example mm-hmm. but the fact that I'm not around them physically is making it a lot easier um mm-hmm. And when I do get around them, just knowing those boundaries will also be helpful for me. So, yeah, I'm dating, but it's more like untraditional, not traditional on me. Mm. Yeah. But is it not? Or is it actually more? Because you think about it, men and women weren't, quote unquote, allowed. Nah, I mean, we, that's, so that's traditional. You had to call people and talk to them for eight months before you could even be outside with them together. Yeah. I think one of the things, too, though, is, like, I don't operate off of that tradition. Yeah. So, like, I don't see that as mine. So I get what you're saying. But to, like, just turn it the other way, the type of dating that I'm used to. Oh, is, yeah. No. Different. Is. <laughs> Big different. <laughs> but I wonder, do you think that this will, um, do you think that. How am I trying to say this? Mm. Do you think that that the situation we're in now will socially impact dating though, like for the long haul? Because we're kind of being, I mean, not we are. We have to operate in, yeah, what might be more of an old fashioned way of romantically and sexually getting to know a person because, yeah, you can't really be up under people. Um, you said, do you think it'll do what to us? Do you think, do you think that this will have a social impact on dating that might be oh, a little larger than we're anticipating? I think it might. I think people are underestimating how this is really going to impact dating because people, I mean, in March, it'll be a year. So like people are like, it only takes what, 90 days to form a habit. Like people are getting used to having to have longer periods of just the conversation. Right. And I wonder what that does. How does that change the landscape of dating? I mean, and honestly, I really believe that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So I'm seeing what you're saying, like, wow, this will really do it for the folk. But some people are not at all focused on learning how to communicate, so they continue mm. to ice themselves. And when I say some, I mean so many. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, like, like half of them. Right. And that's the thing, too. I think the 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 roots that do come out of this will just have a completely different makeup of mm-hmm. like understanding clarity, right? Mm-hmm. Like understanding like that all clarity isn't always, it don't always look or come the way you thought it was going to come. Maybe it take me saying, actually, I need some time to think about that and being comfortable with that, you yeah. know? Cause before when you put somebody face all the time, it was like, Oh, you're not comfortable. I'm out of here. You yep. know, mm-hmm. you're not comfortable. Well, you're the only person I've been talking to for three months. So mm-hmm. I guess I'll <laughs> I guess I'll wait. But for I'll some wait. people, I they say it's it's been a whole lot of ripping and running trying to make stuff work like it used to all the time. But you know, you can't really it's not it's no generalizations. All I can say is the kids, bro. Mm. The kids are learning a different way to communicate and oh, they're being to open up in a way where they see safe spaces different than we do. Yeah. Where they see like, yeah, they might see I mean, going again, this is a generalization in both ways. For example, a lot of the um, virtual classes I know that have been on since August, at this point, they understand their classroom as a pretty safe space. Like, if it's that type of place, it's a safe space, you know? Yeah. Like, And if it's not, you know, that's different. But if it is, like, it gives room for them to be like, you know what, today I'm just not feeling it, bro. Like, we on the same computer and it's been six months. And yep. I'm just not the teacher, either the teacher work with it or they don't. And at this point, if you decided not to work with stuff, it's really... I mean, it doesn't what are you really, doing, though? Like, come on. Right, it doesn't really matter because you still got to sit there in front of that computer. So anyway. So anyway, uh, like, we can really all sit here and pretend or we can at least uh, do something with this hour. Right, exactly. So I think to watch 14-year-olds have to, um, even if they don't work with one another, necessarily having to speak to each other and to um, people that aren't their peers via... Yeah. Like a platform that is completely their voice, completely their typing, their voice, their facial gestures and things like that. And not necessarily um, what it used to give, like just standing yeah. in front of you're sitting there and putting your head down type stuff. It's so weird to know that they are so strong, so strong. You know, I, I was like, I wonder if I really could have done this for real. 
I, I probably could have, but I mean, I didn't, so I'm not gonna say I'm there. You know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't. Th- <laughs> I a lot bro. of people want to say they. I don't think. I think. I think I would. I think it would have been a little difficult for me. It would have been horrible. It's difficult for them too. But that's the yeah. thing. Like that, it's something we didn't have to. We didn't necessarily have to like have right. But that's another thing. Certain strengths that they're that they're gaining. Um, the interactions in person, I do feel like, (laughs) I do feel like once they get outside again, even though it will be precautions and things like that, not just in the near moments, but the Mm -hmm. further future, the way that they'll interact with each other, it won't be as awkward as much as it will be. It won't be awkward in a bad way. How we know awkward. It won't be moving as fast. So it'll be a lot different. Just different. That's what I I mean. People are just going to be moving different. That's all I'm saying. People are going to be moving really different. Absolutely, completely agree. And I think, and I think that that is going to impact dating. Like I've been wondering, like you know, I've been seeing the conversations around absence and celibacy amongst people in our age group and amongst people who look like us. So I've been seeing a lot of young black folks, you know, under the age of thirty-five, mostly. Shout out young black folks. Hey, shout out young black folks. Um, talking about this, and I wonder, and I'm like, yeah, I, I see a lot of people getting on getting on this wavelength and I I wonder what is it that's happening socially that is making some people go, hmm, you know, maybe I think I'll do that for a time. <laughs> you know? However yeah. much time that is, just for a time. Because like you said, let me try that. it changes. Let me try that. That's it. Let yeah, me try let me that. Try, let me try. I don't want to see what that's about. Succeed in or nothing. Let's just let me try that real quick. Uh I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of conversation about it with young black folks. And I'm just like, hey, I really love this. For- well, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I sound like a a freaking evangel- fucking evangelist when it comes to abstinence and celibacy. But it's really because I've, I have really had a personally amazing transformative experience with this. Love to hear and I, I guess you could say I'm very excited about it. And so I want to. I actually with, agree. Yeah, I want to speak with as many people about it. And I want to, and I want to, I want to share that message. Like, I don't know. Like, sometimes I'm like, what is this? What is this feeling? Is this like, is this profit? No. Um, <laughs> but I'm just like, yeah. I just feel the, I just feel the need to talk about it. And I feel the need to not talk about it in like these microcosms of community, but no, I feel the need to talk about it and be able to like, I'm going to make this as available as possible as I can to people. And hopefully they receive the message because I think, I think we need the message. I just think just cause people want to try it. And I'm like, well, if you want to try it, you know, here are some things. That's all. <laughs> That's all this podcast is. No. Yeah. But you agree? I do. I also know, like, at the end of the day, the power of stories. Like, oh, yes. there's no way I could convince you on anything, but I could tell you my story, dog. I could tell you my story. That's <laughs> and if exactly you relate, it. you relate, you know, and if you don't, you don't. And it don't really matter because we just told each other our stories. That's like, it. I just met you and I just told you my story. That's all. <laughs> that's all. We don't even have to relate. You could be like, that didn't make any sense. And that's okay because you know what? My um, Uber's here. So. <laughs> Like, that's all. I just, um, that's it. You got it. See, that's why I had to have you on the podcast. Because I was like, somebody's going to get it. <laughs> um, because that's all it so is. I got a question for you. Yeah, I know. Come on. In what ways do you connect uh, celibacy with, like, outside of sex? In what ways do you connect it mm. to, um, like, an opportunity to get to know self? Um, you know what I've I've been saying that it's been making me very it's been making me more aware of my space. Okay, of my space because I rededicated my space to myself again. Right, mm-hmm. so like my room is my room, my bathroom is my bathroom. You know, like when you're engaged in that way, there's a lot of people in and out of your space a lot. A lot of people in and out of your space. Um, and you start to feel displaced in your own environment, which is weird. Right, um, right. And so I have been, I've been reacclimating myself to my environment and becoming comfortable again. And I think that 
celibacy is a great opportunity to explore that because you have you're making a decision to um not really let people into the space that is not only your body but your actual like domain your home your bedroom your kitchen your bathroom shit your living room um because you need to fill your space with yourself again mm-hmm. before you allow someone to come share a corner you can't have you can't not feel at home and welcome somebody into your home mm-hmm. you know no and that's and that's it'll where it was leading yeah mm-hmm. it'll be theirs after that and yeah. that's not my- so um that that's how i look at it as opportunity i also i always say that celibacy is a devotion to self mastery and it's a devotion to self discipline this is an extreme act of self discipline because we are human beings i'm a human being and i know that i'm a sexual being and i know what i like and i know what i enjoy doing but i also realize that I, for me, for my success, for where I would like to be and go and what I have to accomplish and what my journey is here, I need to be doing that with the utmost intention. Absolutely. So everyone involved receives their benefit. And so if I'm not doing it like that, I don't need to be doing it at all. (laughs) So I'm not. I'm into this. So I'm So I'm not. And I've transmuted that energy into things like this. I started a podcast. I invested in a company. I was about to say, I asked that question because at the end of the day, like a lot of the times what I don't see people doing, Mm. because like you say, you see more, you see a lot of black kids talking about, and I mean, young folks talking about like celibacy and I always did, but they never had a conversation that actually made sense for the general population. It was always related to their religion, but always, they always left a gap. And I'm like, if you're trying to get me to understand something, bro, tell the story. Tell the story. the story don't sit here and play with me like i gotta do what you do and how you do it no, bro like just come on your story just tell me what happened so if, at the end of it tell me what happened bro. come on, come on. Just tell me what you know get to the end and just so tell me what happened tell me the story yeah like i don't i don't i don't i can't hold that as highly as i hold this idea that like you learn something from it not because oh, somebody told so you to do it or because you know, it was really just a learning experience. It was yeah. a moment. It was an experiential learning. That was all it was. Like a story, you know? That's it was what such stories growth. are. You experience such exponential growth in this period of time because you That's are with yourself. Too. You're with yourself. And you're like, okay, self, like what? What can you accomplish today? What can you learn today? I've been teaching myself new skills and shit now. I'm making a rug. Like, what am I doing? I'm, I don't know. I'm being a person. That's it. I'm being a person. All of the above. All of the above related to sex and related to just knowing a lot more about yeah. your views. Yeah. Like, it's so weird actually getting a break from life. And that goes for all of anything that tells yes. you you can't cause it, you know? Or t- people saying, like, you know, if you do this, then I'll just... And I'm like, okay, bro. Then you do okay. that. Yeah. Okay. I, can, like, I can hit a pause <laughs> where I please. And I've decided to hit a pause on this and that's okay I like i like that i can hear the pause where i please yes I can pause where I please. it's my life i don't know how people think that you have to continuously be on go why first of all that's violent when have we not been on go i'm a black woman when have we not been on go right if there is an area in my life in which i would like to say pause and not be doing it so i'm not on go there as well speeding okay jack rabbiting my way through then I'm going to put it on pause and transmute that en- energy somewhere else because you see, you, you still have sexual energy. There's still an energy in your body that you have right. to put out somewhere. So I said, I'm, but, but where, where can I take this ball of energy and, and pump it into something else to produce something I, I can receive? It's and what people receive. don't really. What people do not really know at all is, okay, so we in this little hoe trend, right? This little wave where it's just, we're being a hoe all of a sudden is acceptable. Yeah. And let's not pretend as very deep connected to my, connect the thoughts, you know, like I, I'm making a big picture out of this. Yeah. Um, there's no way where I can pretend like people's understanding of quote unquote the hoe is, or the vixen is like, as deep as it is, I have understood myself in yeah. this moment of celibacy. Because I still identify with all those identify with all. Because at the end of the day, there was nothing more, nothing less that I could yeah. 
really identify myself as. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's not what other people are always coining it as. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me at the moment what the connotation is. It's my understanding that sexual liberation comes in modes different than letting somebody do what they want to to you. Yeah. And I used to hate how people was like, you call yourself a hoe, you got that to be proud of? No, I call myself a hoe and you think it's something not to be proud of. And it's on you that you think that's for me, right? It has nothing to do with me. Has nothing to get, do with that me. That has nothing to do nothing with me. Nothing to do with me. You feel a way about how you feel about this because of your own feelings. So you sort them out because I know how I feel. <laughs> because, and guess what? I'm going to do what I do and I'm doing it in 32 ways, okay? Because that's how I know I'm good at what I do. And I'm still and happy and I'm still enjoying and this. And yes, now I've entered into the state. <laughs> so I'm here. I'm, I'm so into it. I'm so into this idea that versatility actually exists actively. Like, well, wow. like you said, sexual liberation, it, it comes, it, listen, I feel like life is an act of movement. So maybe and this is movement it, right. five for you. Yeah, maybe this is movement seven for you in life, like the opera. There are movements. There are movements. Um, so this is a movement. Now you're in the movement of celibacy. Like, it's just, it's just life. Like, you're just ebbing and flowing. That's it. But when I do make the decision, yeah, it's like, don't, you know, don't try to come and put on me emotions you feel about you because they have nothing to do with me. You're trying to mask them as having something to do with me. They don't. Right. And I know that. Right. I, I, I can tell you they do. In the moment, I not only get out of, like, defending myself, but also being able to accept myself and rejoice and celebrate that, Mm -hmm. it becomes, like, this superpower, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, all of a sudden now, I'm super ho. You know, I'm super duper on what I came to be on. And I could have decided to not, or I could have decided to see it differently, and I do see it differently, but I still accept myself as what I decide to call myself and name myself. It's so exciting to me that I used to think that for example, being celibate, I used to think that just like astrology or, or or therapy, people said that's white folks stuff. Celibacy, I was like, that's Christian. Like that's that's yep, religious. Yeah, people, yeah. <laughs> and so then I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. But I'm not gonna let nobody own nothing that they don't really own. So let me go ahead and try to like try it out. And so at the end of the day, like I'm excited to know that I can still be me so vers- mm-hmm. vers- um in such a versatile way and still like, it's just integration on integration. It's new levels. I'm into it. And that's all life is. Life is just you integrating experiences you had into a program. <laughs> that's how I feel. Program. I yeah. like that. Yeah, life, you're just you're just integrating experiences that you're having into a program. The program that is you. So you are now integrating this program of celibacy. That's all. Mm-hmm. people don't think about it like that we're just integrating programs so, into ourselves for an amount of time right and it's a new it's really approaching a problem in a different way mm. like by problem I just mean like a a, a situation yeah no like, I get it yeah it's, it's one of those ideas that like okay what's my competition for this oh that's how I used to approach it. Let me try something a little different. Yeah. Effective that it is, you know. Mm. And it's busting. I'll tell you that it's, it's busting. I don't like these folks, and I mm. never really liked them that much. But now I know why I don't like them, and I know what I like about these folks. Really, yeah. and that's how beautiful it is. people don't get it. Like that's <laughs> that's also really what it's about. People are like, but don't you miss it? Actually, no. Because not at all, bro. Not at all. I actually because hated it. You... I hated that part. Oh my god! When you really think about it, you're like, wow, I'm really. I'm so happy. Wow. But it also makes you see like, damn, why was I ever messing with folk in the way I was messing with folk? That was not making right, me happy. I hated it there. <laughs> I thought That's I loved it there and I hated it there. <laughs> I only told myself that because you told me that. And that's really what it is. And I think people have a hard time dealing with that. I know we all like to think that we really were making our own, our own for true, for true, sexually liberated decisions and I, and sometimes you were yeah sometimes you were but i think like come on like come on let's be honest with ourselves most of the time we definitely weren't we were definitely doing it because someone else said <laughs> and we got and I think motivated too, and inspired that thing that thing about understanding like what what's those programs what's instilled in us and how do we how do we ignore that it was you know picked for us like, if you can't just promise yourself that you'll be aware of more things and that you'll do your best with your awareness, it's like, don't be the weakest link. Don't be the weakest link. Like, don't be your own weakest link. Come on, take it. That's all. 
know. And I think that that's, it's, you know, we just, that's why, again, that's why I just was like, I want to have these conversations because I just want people to know that, like, people are having these experiences too. And we're learning from them. And we love it here. And if you're right. thinking about it, there is a community. There are people. You now know two more people. You know, like, and I, people listen to the podcast and they DM me and stuff. I chat. Like, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not like, I'm going to chat with you. Like, I, this is why I did this. Because I was like, I want to chat with people doing this because I just have things to say, questions to ask, and experiences mm -hmm. I'd like to share to learn. And I would like to talk to people who I think align with that or just are even interested, or just like would want to share space and hold space. What they used to say, let's start the conversation. Let's just start the conversation. Let's talk. <laughs> so I started talking to people and people started talking back to me and I was like, oh, hey, look at us. Look at I'm us. talking. We're having a conversation. Okay. Yeah. And I think at the, like ultimately the strength in relationship building that starts and ends with you like deciding and acting yes. on building. like not just people think building we, when I hear folks say all the time like let's build like what the fuck are you talking about do you even are you even a construction worker are you even, yeah, are you, even do you ever be, are you even use a hammer do you they even blueprint hammer. like where's your architect like Please. where let me hear some of the instructions let me see your team you said build, your with, build what <laughs> You mean throw shit around, Come nigga. On, you don't Excuse mean my nigga language. I didn't mean to say nigga. But folks be meaning to throw shit around. They do. And so I'm not going to sit here and throw shit around with you because if I get hit, that's when I get pissed. Okay? And I might not get pissed at you, but let's not be pissed for no reason. Let's actually be pissed, you know, while we're building something. Like, let's, let's okay. try to... I'm not going to be... Like, cause at the end I'll be pissed if we threw all the shit around and it came to nothing. Nothing, you know? but the, but that's also <laughs> but that's also why it's like, so you know if you really want to build something or not. So again, let's not say let's build. You don't want to build nothing right here, and that's okay. Go somewhere and you want to build, but like not here, cause like you said, if I get hit, I'm no. So I'd rather not. And if you waste my products and stuff, not like I can't get no more, but like, come on, bro. No, you we didn't have to break that plywood for no reason. No reason. <laughs> we could go get some more. Oh, could have kept it right there. Like, why y'all like this? Like, plywood do not grow out the ground like that. You know you gotta cut it. It's um, it's an ex you know, it's just it's a wild experience. It's a wild experience when you make a pivot in life. It's a it's a major life choice to not be having sex right now for however long right now means to you but because of where we live and how sex is you and what it is like yeah that's a major pivot in lifestyle i know and i don't think people usually talk about it as a lifestyle change we just talk about it like it's just a decision i've made but i'm like yeah but it's a lifestyle change because it kind of kind of affects every aspect of your life now you're moving completely differently because <laughs> right. you just know you're not going to go to a certain point so it's like you do you just you just gonna be moving different that's all and it's so going back to release like it's so fun to me to know that like every day you said lifestyle every day i wake up and i review yesterday mm. and i have this lifestyle for today you know like i pretend like my life is the news and i'm like so what happened jim and i'm like damn bro this how it went this was this was the you know this was the play and then i'm like okay so what are we gonna do on today's play like what what are we deciding what position are we gonna be in um and it's crazy because every day and maybe every other day the the way i masturbate it becomes something completely and people talk about sex magic i've been doing that for years mm -hmm. like before i knew it had a name yeah it's just really fun to know you can work your magic in eight, 85 ways okay <laughs> that's it that's all i know that's all i know the idea that i'm expanding my magic it just brings me it brings me a type of solace where it's like you motherfuckers wasn't really helping that much, but I do appreciate your participation. Um, no, look, for real, I do I got, appreciate your participation. I got it from here. I got it from here, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. It's, 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 it's very deep. I love it. It's I love it. I love you for having these conversations, for sure. I just, I want to create space, bro. You know me. You know I love creating space and and bringing people together to hold to hold space so i'm um, <laughs> to hold yeah i i'm 
appreciate you for coming on to the podcast. That was actually a really good double entendre. I said to have and to hold. This is also about, you know, marriage. She or has a college degree, if you didn't know. So. But it came before the degree. <laughs> the degree ain't even say nothing about that. So me and my double entendre. I agree. Niggas be like, that was We live in a land, a play land, baby, okay? <laughs> Niggas be like, that was a really great double entendre. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners are like the fuck, bitch. This is, what is this? From, school from the French, meaning a pun. Okay, Family. look at her origin in the word. She's gonna give you the Latin root. All right, now. Akila, Akila taught me Tink. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, in real life, I'm so grateful for you, though. I appreciate your time. You know I appreciate saying. the fact that you actually connect and build that bridge because I can't stand a motherfucker that really leave the construction in the middle. Let's you know? link, let's link, bro. Let's link, let's link. Let's link. Let's be less linking you for like eight years. No, let's talk. We should talk. Get on the phone. We should, get, especially now during this, we should really talk. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna Facetime you. I'm good. I don't even be responding to people no more. I'm like, if you were gonna call me, you would have called me. Like at this point, right? I prefer Girl. you don't. I prefer you don't. Like, oh my I'm God. the type. If you tell me you're gonna call me and you don't after a certain amount of time, if I don't know you for real, I'm blocking you. I'm block. We're not chatting no more. You're not point, having random. Ass- that's to me, buddy. Mm, buddy. Mm, I have conversations with people. And so if you would like to be a person I have a conversation with, we're going to be having our conversations. And if we don't, that's totally fine. Like you said, I will block you. <laughs> and we will not be chatting. Like, I don't even really know you like that. Whereas all, it's not like, um, come on now. Don't act like you've been here for eight years and I'm being paid. Right. No. All that random you just people. Oh. You wasn't even using it, Tanky. And that's another thing about sex. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about it. It's a matter of time before people start getting bored, right? Mm. Just, just and of course, new ideas come up. You know, things get resparked. But what I can't do with is motherfuckers acting like I'm regular, oh, right? I can't, yeah. I can't, and because I don't act like people are regular. Like oh, I, I get excited. And so one of the things too is like if somebody knows they fuck with you, but they definitely don't show it all the time. You know, it's cool because like like you said, it's really just a matter of if you don't, you don't. That's cool. But what I'm not gonna sit here and do because we do it habitually is like let you pretend like I'm less than I am, and oh, it don't yeah, matter. No. You don't you don't put me all the way on the floor, but like if you wasn't holding me up, like I start falling, and that's not beautiful. You know, that's not beautiful. You know, no, I'll step away. <laughs> I'll leave. I'll step away. I read and I and I'm had to really and I've had to really do it like for real for real one time before. I had to really be like, oh, I'm stepping away. Um, <laughs> And never looking back because you just realize that that's how it starts. You know, you allow one person to really, really treat you like that for real. Like, no, nah, we're not talking about a text, you know, or, or a comment on a Facetime call. We're talking about like, like they're like they're in your life treating you like that, and you you're like, mm, I let one person do this, just one person. I'm gonna let everybody, so I can't do it. Nah. I have to make a behavioral change. Ooh, wow, that's deep. Yes, I have to make a behavioral change right now in myself so I don't repeat this pattern because people do try to treat people like they're regular and it's like, now you know that that's not even what we're doing over here. <laughs> right, and if we know behavior is how people think about themselves, it's not necessarily, it's just what they, yeah, it's what they know, right? Or what they believe they can do. It's like, okay, I get it, you know, and it's not your fault that you you done did this all the way. But if we talking about, like, who you keep around you and how that influences you, I'm not taking no notes from you, motherfucker. If this if this how you living, <laughs> I can't live like yeah, that. Yeah, this how you living, like, and it's like, no judgment. This is how you living, this is how you living, but also, like, it's you. Right, I gotta it's go, like, though. it's gonna be you, though, not me, you. I'm not doing to this, too. I'm out of here. I don't have to. Right. It's, um... You know what? Ha <laughs> ha. It's easier to make those kind of choices when you're not having sex with a person. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. It is but much easier. Thing, and people don't believe it at all. But like, it's, it really is. <laughs> or people, people do believe it, but they believe that they need the sex more. And it makes me so sad. Uh, you know what it I'm is? Like, I think people think that when there's no sex, they think the emotions get like so overwhelmingly deep. It's going to be more difficult. But I'm like, they don't though. The emotions do get very, very deep. But I'm like, uh, if a person is making you think I'm I'm a walk. Yeah, I'm going to walk. And you walk. They didn't get that deep yet, which is good for you. Because if y'all had had sex, you would be tricked into believing it had. And it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't <laughs> because when I'd be like, oh yeah, this is not, mm, no, I'm good. Um, mm, I'm good off this. It's, it's, it's much easier for me to just be like, yeah, bye. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm through with it because when you have Going sex, back to uh, yeah, when you have sex, it's like, ah, you're all tangled up in that person now. 
too much. And even if not completely, it was at least physically, and that's way too much. That's way too much. I feel like that's even more. That's just way too much. It's a symbol. It's, it's a symbol. Too much. That's just... Symbols make up the imagination and yeah. all that other stuff. The alphabet is a damn symbol. symbol. So all these like, things are spells. So y'all, was, your think. Hello, tell preach to them. When y'all having sex, you were literally entangled in creating symbols. You're gonna sit here and tell me. You don't give a... F- you're lying. You know, and that right there, red flag. If you are going to sit here and play in my face <laughs> and try to lie <laughs> about that, we don't even need to go any further in this conversation. You know? <laughs> like Exactly. We don't even need to... Let's just enjoy this little lunch that we went out to and let this be, you know, a meeting of the mind. And it all is a matter of time before you realize how valuable that thing time is, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's so cool to know that, like, you make decisions and they don't always got to be the same one. They don't. And you really come up with, you know, some nice results. Well, it's because if you want different outcomes, you make different choices. And I think people really, people really um, don't expect people to make different choices. And it's like, yeah, but why wouldn't they, though? Like, why wouldn't somebody say... I'm going to make a different decision and see how like the outcome is. I'm going to see. But you know what it is? I think when people start to see you experiencing different outcomes, that's when you get questioned a lot. I don't know if you experienced it, but when I was when I was early in my journey, I got questioned about it a lot. People were really like, why are you doing this? Like Everyone thought like something had happened or it was some trauma response. And I was just like, no, I just think I'm just, I'm like, I'm cool. <laughs> That's it. And it comes down to it where, like, if you don't know the difference or if you haven't been able to see the difference between how you, how your responses, like, come about. Like, if it's a trauma response, it's like you've been triggered and Mm -hmm. this is this and you're not aware and certain things. And there's always going to be something you're not aware of. But when it comes down to intentions and understanding, like, why you're doing something, like, truly digging through the 15 whys. It becomes a thing where it's like, okay, now I get it. Now I get that people can say what they want, but, you know, it is what it is. And now, understanding that it actually takes time and space to do things, it's like a moment of stillness and of quiet from everything else other than yourself. It really just gives you a moment to be clear. Like, that's it. That's it. And that clarity is worth so much more than a lot of people's words. Because it ain't no joke listening to people who don't know nothing about Yo, people will alter the whole trajectory of what you want because you listen to somebody who don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but, trying to send you in a direction that is literally theirs, what? not yours. Like, they don't know nothing about nothing. Are you really about to listen to them? I would not do it. You know, like, I would not do that. I think that you have much better choices out here for yourself. I would not do it, beloved. I would make a different decision quick, fast, and in a hurry. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, no, this is, see, this is why, this is why I create these spaces because I just, people are having these conversations and I think people think people are not having them. And for me, I feel that's because we are not, we're not publicizing them. And I think that some things need to be shared in community. Some things need to be I believe so. recorded, posted, and shared so we can all have a point of reference. I love it. I love it. I love it. I will be listening to this podcast from now on. Yes, this was the episode. So thank you, thank you, thank you, my joy, for being here. XOXO. That means hugs and freaking kisses. It also means gossip girl. Um, in French. Right. (laughs) Right. In French, it means gossip girl. I know because in French it does mean gossip girl. XOXO means gossip girl in French right it does going back to that repetition let the people know (laughs) someone's gonna tweet did you guys know that I was today years old when I learned (laughs) right how old were you when you figured out so XO means gossip girl in French I done lost this game of Wheel of Fortune on my phone so all right we out of here yeah we're out of here I love you guys thank you for listening this is Joy Joy just remind people one more time what you do and if you want them to find you somewhere tell them where to go (gasps) oh my goodness oh my goodness so I offer a lot of different things, but mostly what I do is build networks and communities. So my idea is that if I if I got it, you got it. If you got it, I got it. And if we don't got it, we can figure out how to get it. Um, so that's build one, build some, build all. 
the understanding is that, you know, there are so many different things and places in this world, um, people who do what they do and they do it well, and that we all can use and need one another. So that said, um, find me on B or on Instagram at B O B S B A underscore same at on Twitter. Um, I'm coming up with a website soon where if you advertise for any of the things that I'm doing or that I'm advertising for, you'll get credits where you can like use those on the website for products and for maybe like a little Visa gift card or something. Um, so yeah, uh, currently I personally do dance classes, um, and, uh, what do you call it? Astrology readings, serial yes. to serial astrology. I'll wait you say yes. That. <laughs> yes. Um, hit me up, you know, we're affordable, uh, I give you a whole lot of things based on your learning style. I really appreciate a strength-based understanding. So, yeah, let me know how you learn, and I'll I'll talk to you in your language. All right. Yeah, so All just right. remind people one more time of what kind of readings you do so they can hear you. Sidereal astrology bases itself not off the seasons, but off the... What is it called? Is it the word equinox? Is mm. not, or is it not based off equinox? I can't tell you, but it is based off of how the axis moves... Um, the earth axis moves rather than the seasons that we experience and um i received that because it was a lot of white folks telling me stuff without explaining it and then a black woman said something and explained it and i had to go i had to leave that tropical stuff alone because it you will show you a tool that is who i'm talking about oh Dana my god Nicole. i was why did i yeah. feel her energy i was like are you someone that i was told you need to say people's oracle you need to plug her right now so i was like do you know the people? yeah <laughs> not you like that's what i'm talking about because she's like absolutely i don't hear y'all saying my name you're right people's oracle. right absolutely <laughs> dana knuckles absolutely yes yes Just so that's who me. that's me hope this is you um have a great night everybody have thanks a great night everybody <laughs>